Welcome to 3D Printing Nerd Studios, proudly powered by PCB. Wait, 8% off, link in the description. You know what to do. And you also know what time it is. It's time to learn about the very brand new Bamboo Lab tool changer, the H2C. Bamboo Lab teased this not that long ago, and they gave you a peek at what they're calling the Vortec hot end system. And it is fascinating, and I've had a lot of time with it. And now, now, I get to tell you all about it. The first thing I did was get it out of the box and set up. And you know, it was packed really well. Right out the front. And Bamboo, of course, is still top notch when it comes to an out of box experience. The build volume is 330 by 320 by 325. It's different than the H2D and the H2S. So you're not gonna be able to share build plates between these machines. The build plate is textured PEI and has a max of 120C. Included with mine was a Vortec nozzle pack. It had a 0.2 millimeter nozzle, three different 0.4 millimeter nozzles, and a 0.6 millimeter nozzle. These Vortec nozzles all have magnets and electronics and are hardened and really are a great piece of engineering. Each one of them can go to 350C. Also included was a spare quick release 0.4 millimeter nozzle. And as it turns out, the Vortex system uses the right side and the left side of the print head uses the quick release bamboo nozzles. At this point in the unboxing, I got my very first look at the Vortex system. It's two different racks, A and B, that each hold up to three different Vortex nozzles. The rack movement is powered and automated. It's a neat way to do a tool changing system, and it's really impressive to see this operate in person. During first use, the Vortec rack is first calibrated before any nozzles are added to it. The print head moves over each rack mount and has the rack mount tap the head a few times. A little light comes on, I think that's doing some math, and then it goes through each of the six rack mounts. At this point, the already mounted 0.4 millimeter Vortec nozzle is added to and removed from each hot end rack position. It's crazy to see how fast this thing goes. Grenade for speed. Now the calibration is done, it was time to add the nozzles. There are two magnets on each Vortec nozzle, one to hold it to the rack and one to hold it to the print head. The magnet with two holes holds it to the rack and it was easy to place them in by hand. Once all are in, it reads the nozzles in the hot end rack. It does this by installing each one in the print head and pulling the locking lever. Once locked in, it reads the nozzle information, then it unlocks it and puts it back in the hot end rack. As filaments are loaded into the Vortec nozzles, the H2C keeps track of the color and material and shows it on the display. The display even updates in near real time as the hot end rack is moving. The Vortex system is incredible. It's it's beautiful. It's this it's this dance of chaos, and I just love seeing it. And I also love seeing the power on because then you can see the inside of the machine, and it allows me to get to the PLA prints because I did some of those. I had a Benchy, it, of course, of course. This was on the memory card, and I printed a Benchy. Checks out. There was also this color palette loaded on the. The card, it just took, uh, it's got five filaments. So it took one from the left side, four on the Vortec, and it pooped this out. And it looks good. With some of the filaments loaded, I of course printed a little panda guy. This little panda guy was on the memory stick as well. And I, um, I, don't, I, I just like it. I like this model and it looks good. Also on the memory card was this. It's this little fidget. And what's kind of cool, it prints like this, just print in place, and the transition tower, purge tower, whatever you want to call it, only goes up as high as the layer is that has more than one color on it. So your transition or purge tower is only that tall, and then the rest of it is just glorious and wonderful. And then you get yourself a fun little toy, and that was on the memory, and I like it. One of the things I was really excited to print was this marble run. And you saw this in a single color on the P2S. But what I did is I brought this into Bamboo Studio and utilizing the version that I had access to for the H2C, I painted it in a way to just try to add some color. And I tried to make it challenging. That was my goal. And with the Vortex system being able to print it, there are some parts where it looks like it just flew a little too close to the sun, but 
for the most part, I think it did a really good job considering my paint job was atrocious and it was some random PLAs. Let's see, it was Prusament Galaxy Black and a bunch of Panchroma from Polymaker, as one does. I would do some changes if I was to print this again, but as an exercise in testing, it did an okay job. That Vortex system has a 0.2 millimeter nozzle within it. And so, oh no. So I thought, what if I printed this kind of cool little eagle character and it got as high as the bottom of the head and then it jammed. Before we get into the jam, I just want to say that the 0.2 nozzle was performing incredibly well. The wings do wing things and the, the purge was just like that. It, it's, it's tiny, but the quality's there and it was, it was getting there, but we had a jam. So let's talk about it. This is it. This is the nozzle that jammed. I did my best to try and clear it, but with the Vortec nozzles, there's not an easy way to hold this. And then you run into the issue is if you have a jam further up in what would be the cold side of it, heating the cold side to try and clear it, like in a, in a heat break, you don't run the same risk as this because this has electronics and magnets built into it. And so I used my Hacksmith torch to try to heat it. I was moving it a bunch and trying to apply the heat evenly and consistently. And then I had a like a coat hanger style wire trying to push it out just so I could shove it out. Or I had a little Allen key, the tiniest one to try to grip and pull stuff out, but stuff wasn't coming out. And then when I tried to just put it back in the system to see if something would have cleared, the magnets didn't work anymore. And so these are magnets that can't withstand the heat. If you think about a build plate, it going to 100C and beyond, there are very special magnets that you use that maintain the magnetism at a high heat. And the magnets that are on this are not one of those. So if you have a Vortec nozzle and you run into jams, there's a really good chance that this fulfills its life as a consumable rather than something that you repair. It's an unfortunate side effect of advancement. We have this technology, sits in the nozzle, it does amazing things, but previous ways of trying to mitigate problems don't find themselves working on this because of all this advancement in places. It is what it is. I did eventually want that Eagle. I just didn't have the 0.2 available anymore. And so I chose one of the 0.4 nozzles and then I got that Eagle. It is interesting when you load up Bamboo Studio using a Vortex system, you have to choose the nozzle size that you want to use in the project. You can't mix and match different nozzle sizes within the same print or the same project. And uh, I think that's a software limitation because I know the Prusa XL has the ability to do that. This doesn't, or at least yet. I would, I would imagine it's software. I would imagine after launch at some point, we may get a Bamboo Lab blog that says, hey, look, now we can do that thing. I bet that's how we solve it in the future. I made some flowers for my niece. Long ago, I made some Lego flowers for my mom. And when my niece was over there, she said, hey, maybe I can have some of those. So my mom texted me and I was like, sure. What does she want? Well, she wants the stems to be green, but she wants pinkish flowers. I thought that, that works out great. What I could do is put each of the flowers on different parts of the build plate and then the stems would print. And as you would have it, um, the flowers all printed fine, and when it got to the stems at first, it didn't work because it failed on the build plate and lost adhesion. And so what I did was just print it again, and then I used the cancel object feature on the screen, and I canceled all of the flowers, so all it did was the stems and stuff, and it worked out great. And now my niece has flowers. One more, one more PLA print, and then we'll, we'll get to some other materials but I've got something that is absolutely incredible. This is uh, by, by Reuven and it is a slime ball fidget. And right now it's sitting on a base and it is kind of fragile. I printed it in Prusa Mint Galaxy Black and Polymaker Panchroma, I think. It should, it's, it, does, it does slime. It is an incredible print. 
and I'm so happy it finally worked. It, it took a long time to do. This wasn't the only time att I attempted this, and it brings about a very, very specific problem that this machine has. So I tried that print multiple times. The first time I tried it, it got to a certain height and then failed. It broke loose from the bed. Not a problem. Just a misnomer. I cleaned it off, dish soap like Dawn and isopropyl alcohol, and it was just dried and clean and good. Tried it again, failed again. I'm like, oh. Then I tried some adhesion helper. I slathered the bed in Vision Miner's nanopolymer adhesive, and that didn't work. I'm like, well, what is going on here? This doesn't make any sense. So I loaded it into Bamboo Studio, and I put a 50 millimeter brim on it because I just wanted to give it both barrels, and I was like, full send, and that worked. I also printed a stock pot or slow cooker lid for my wife and it's in ABS material and it should just go on. I mean, it looks good. It's nice and rigid and thick and mm, good. It's chunky. And I, I was gonna put it on, but it's not at our house right now. Someone's borrowing it. Uh, I'll try to get this on because I wanna show you because it's a cool lid and it serves a purpose and it's practical. We, we love we practical. practical. I kind of went crazy and with ABS loaded, like, Polymaker ABS. I had black and gray and pink and this fluorescent green. These fabric looking cuddly animals. They are not cuddly, not in the, not in the least because they are very rigid, but this is friggin' ABS in the machine. So I did preheat the chamber to 65 C and I let it soak for a bit. That is the temperature that the chamber can get to. I used organic supports and I said, let's friggin' do this. Unfortunately, um, one of the supports failed. There was this uh, sweet giraffe. It was looking good, but the supports failed and the giraffe has historically a long neck. Allegedly. And that neck would not be supported. It would be failed. So I went through and did cancel object on the sweet little giraffe. So now you just have legs and a tail, but these other ones work great. I did attempt an engineering grade material, some PA6 GF, that's polyamide, uh, nylon, nylon six GF glass fiber, glass filled, whatever you want to call it. It was from Bamboo Lab. And when I originally tried it, I get the feeling it was a little waterlogged as PA6 can be. It's very hygroscopic. So I actually filmed a short about this. I threw it in the Vision Miner machine. And this chamber can go to 110 degrees Celsius. And I was able to set the bed to 100 C and I put it in there overnight. And then once it had been in there overnight. I took it and I put it in the vacuum chamber and I, I introduced a vacuum and I left it there for a few days. And so it was gonna draw out any bits of moisture. And then, and then I gave it another print and it came up with these. They look weird. There's these weird layer anomalies. So this is PA6 glass fiber and you can kinda, you can hear it. <laughs> there you go. I shouldn't be able to do that with my hands. It feels wrong. So here's the thing. I talked to my mm -hmm. buddy at Bamboo Lab, the one we communicate with, and it was, um, mm -hmm. he was like, try a different material. I didn't have time to do that, but I'd like to throw this out to you. Uh, PA6 GF, properly dried, proper temperatures, proper printed. How is it as a material? Have you printed with it? And if so, what have you printed? And what were the mechanical properties of the material after you printed it? Because this is not good. My original plan was printing some brackets and then I was gonna build a table and put the friggin' printer on it. And now, um, and now I can't. Now I can't. Um, and it looks weird. I did something in PETG that I adore. So when I did the P2S video, there was a PETG and a print that didn't look good. And I think the consensus was the filament was a little wet. So I put that PETG in a dryer so in the H2C, I selected the 0.6 millimeter Vortec nozzle and I printed this and it's good. Like it's so good. And I didn't get any lift on the build plate, but it's, um, it's fused. Oh, it's fused and I'm gonna break something. Oh, it's fused and it won't close. Oh, but it's so good. The quality is there with PETG, but with the 0.6 nozzle on this at the layer height chosen, it froze it up. I wanna try it again in PETG, maybe the same stuff, cause I still have it. Maybe with a 0.4 nozzle and maybe a different layer height. I don't know, but I mean, you just look at it and you're like, 
Oh, that's good. Like, it's really, really good. All right, we're in the end game, Tony, and I want to show you the last two prints before we get to some thoughts, and they are... This is a Dice Dozer by Clockspring 3D, and normally you can just pick one of the various parts of the model and hit go. Rather than painting it by color, I painted it by face, I think it is, or face groups or connecting color or whatever. I don't remember what it was. And I went through painstakingly picking surfaces and it turned out incredible. And the color scheme works. I've got that panchroma in there. This is a CF PLA. The green is a Bamboo Lab just basic PLA. And this is a, a sparkly purple PLA from Bamboo. Like there are certain segments where you can see just a, a slight overhang for some reason didn't get taken care of. I am searching for things to say wrong about this and I love the heck out of it. It's so good, it's so, so good. And finally, I, I have to show you this. This is that same clock spring tentacled treasure chest model printed using the Vortex system. This was custom painted by me in Bamboo Studio and in printing this on the Vortex, it did say that if I was printing on like an H2D or an H2S, I would be using over 900 grams more because of the purge and taking longer. But because of the Vortex and being able to switch between multiple nozzles and the left nozzle on here, I was able to print this. And it is 99.9% perfect. There's a little mist extrusion right here in one of the walls. Man, I am nitpicking because this is friggin' perfect. Let's go through the filaments because the brown is a random wood filament. The gray is going to be the CFPLA from Bamboo Lab. The shiny gold is an elixir from Printed Solid. The purple is gonna be that sparkly purple PLA from Bamboo Lab. And that green is that basic PLA from Bamboo Lab. I almost want to call this my favorite print because I didn't do anything special other than the way that I painted it. I loaded the materials into this, I sliced it, and I hit print. And then two days later, this is what we got. And if you come visit me in the studio at any point, you're going to get to see it, touch it, taste it, whatever, and you, you will agree with me. That really leaves us in this incredibly weird space because this is a latest flagship from Bamboo and I showed you prints from it that look unreal. That, again, that tentacled treasure chest is unreal. It's really tough. Like, I had, I had incredible success with, with materials and prints on here and the way that the Vortex moves is really neat. It's this technological dance and it works and it's faster and it wastes less and there's all sorts of good points but at the same time man if you can't get your prints to reliably stick to the bed even with adhesion helpers i don't know what you do that's a tough one at time of filming i don't know the price um unfortunately it's not available yet bamboo lab will release the price of this and then it will be up to you knowing what I and the myriad of others who have this machine say about it. And you, you take all of that and then you put it next to the price and then you decide if this is something that you want and can't afford. That's my look at the H2C. Bamboo Lab provided this and had no input on the video and no cash traded hands. They are my friends though, but they expect honesty and that's what you got from me. So thanks for watching. If you made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, fight for cause you believe in, and print all the things. And as always, high five.